Hello again and welcome to another Applied Energistics 2 tutorial. These videos are going to be looking at how we can automate other mods with Applied Energistics 2 and this tutorial is going to be using Industrial Craft 2. We're going to start off by automating the metal formers and how we can use them. Then we're going to be using the ore washing plants to process our uranium into an enriched uranium to make the fuels and then we're going to automatically set up our fuel rod production that then we can export into our nuclear reactor and then import back into our system to recycle it all back around so it's fully automated for you. Any likes and comments on this video will be greatly appreciated so let's get into it. So to start with I've just got a basic A2 system set up here. I've got our crafting terminal, an interface terminal and a pattern terminal with some drives, some um, crafting units, some interfaces over there as well some molecular assemblers. Inside our system we've just got some of the common ingots that are used through IC2 and some rubber and a ton of uranium which we use to make our fuels. So the first thing we're going to look at is automating the metal formers and we've got two. One of the formers is permanently going to be set to rolling and the other is set to extruding. And I've got a load of these overclocker upgrades just to try and speed up the process and they're powered behind by MFSEs. On the side of each one I've got an interface and I've also got a input bus to remove the items and put them back in our system. And if we go over to our interface terminal, you can see I've actually named extruding and rolling just so we don't get mixed up when putting patterns inside all the time. So let's ha ha look at how we can use these. So let's start off with the iron then, shall we? Make sure that your AE is set to processing patterns. And we'll place one iron ingot in there and let's say we're going to put the iron through the extruder and it will give us four cables back. Let's write that pattern and if we put it through the roll-in it's going to give us one iron plate. So let's encode that pattern as well. So this is where it helps having them named. So we can see the extruding can go in there and the roll-in can go in there. So now we can see that these appeared. So let's say if we want to craft one iron is going to give us four cables, OK. We'll just quickly wait for that to come through the system. You see it's already done. Nice and easy. So you can go and do this with all of them. So you've got, you can see you've got all these different plates. You've also got the dense ones. So if you're trying to do any of the dense ones, it's just simply the same. You can use a compressor. And you've also got all the cables as well that you can use. Say so you can go and then make a gold cable and put some rubber around it in, in the patterns as well, nice and easy. So let's have a look at now making one or two other things with this, with the patterns. So I've gone ahead and repeated the process for the copper cables, one copper gives three cables, I've also put some redstone in here and I've also done a, a pattern for the insulated copper, so just one piece of rubber, one piece of copper and I've gone and put it in this pattern here to give us electronic circuit which we can then go and put in our molecular assembler. So you use these circuits quite a bit. So let's see how long it takes for one to do. So you have to remember that if you put your overclocker upgrades in, it will go quicker when crafting all these bits and bobs. It may take a bit of time otherwise. Done. So you can see that's so much easier than having to mess around using the hammer or whatnot, any other ways and the snips to try and make all your wires and plates and everything. So that's quite useful. So let's look at some ore automation next. Let's just grab a single piece of that. So over here we've got a macerator, an ore washing plant and a thermal centrifuge all being powered with some water input for the ore washing plant. So what's going to happen here is the macerator is going to pulverize this ore down, the ore washing plant is going to remove a lot of the impurities and crud that we don't necessarily want and then the thermal centrifuge is going to get our uranium from this and we've got our import bus here that's going to remove and put back in our system and an export bus that's going to pull from our system. So what we can go and do is put the uranium ore in there and this will fill the macerator up with ore. It will give us our crushed uranium ore. Let's just take that out there for now. Right, so if we go and chuck in one of these ejector upgrades it's going to put it into our ore washing plant. You can see the ore washing plant washes the crushed uranium gets rid of the uranium gets so we get stone dust and tiny piles of lead dust as a side product 
and in our thermal centrifuge you can see we've got purified crushed uranium. Now the thermal centrifuge takes a bit of time to warm up so it's always good to have a constant supply so you're not waiting around like this. So we'll cut back when this is about done. Okay so it's about done. So once the heat is done you'll see it's starting to warm up here and it should separate our purified crushed uranium and we should get some tiny piles and also some normal piles. I think it's 235 and 238. Yep, uranium 238 and uranium 235. So we need both of these to make our enriched fuel. So let's get this hooked back up to the system. Like that. And we should see it going back into our system in a second. So the next bit is we're going to have to try and create a pattern for our enriched fuel, which is quite easy. So let's get, get, have a look at how we do that in a second. So the first thing we need to do is start creating our fuel is we're going to need a pattern to make a fuel rod. And to make our fuel rod, it's an iron plate that's been extruded. Okay. So let's go and get one iron plate. Processing pattern turned on. Let's go over to our metal former and grab that quickly. Okay, I'm going to pop that in there like that. I'm going to write the pattern for it and make sure that you put in the correct one into the extruder. So if we take that out, cancel that, we should see when we click that we're going to craft one plate and then it's going to go back into our system and create the one fuel rod again. That shouldn't take long. There you go. Right. So the next thing is we need to create the a pattern for the enriched uranium nuclear fuel. So let's do that as well. There we go. And this one wants to go in our molecular assembler. So let's quickly see, make sure that's worked okay. Brilliant. So next up, we want to create a pattern for filling our fuel rod with our enriched uranium nuclear fuel. So if we go to our pattern and say that one empty fuel rod will give us, all right, so to finish this off, we need to go out to our fluid solid canning machine. And make sure it's on the canning here and you can see I've got a ME interface on top and an export bus on the side and an input bus on the other side. I'm just going to quickly shift click these in and try and shift click that out. Okay, so that's full fuel rod there with uranium. So, in fact I've done that wrong, you don't want to do that at all. You want to put your enriched fuel on that side. Okay. And then this wants to go into this interface up here. So what's this going to do? This is going to say when we click on craft, it's going to craft a enriched uranium nuclear fuel. And it's going to put it into this ME interface because this is what we've said. We said that it creates one fuel rod with that. And it's going to place it into our solid canning machine. Our solid canning machine is going to have fuel rods already waiting, empty ones. And it's going to can up the fuel and eject it into our system. So let's try this out in a second. Let's get that set up. So we're going to go and put on this export bus a fuel rod. Now it isn't really going to do anything because we haven't told the system what to do yet. So if we wanted to craft one of those, the fuel rods, we click on one. All it's going to do is export a piece of rich uranium fuel into here. What we want to do is put a crafting card in this export bus. It's going to say if there's room for fuel rods inside it's going to make them so let's get one of those and we should start to see that this is going to slowly fill up with some fuel rods okay so you can see this is slowly starting to fill up with some fuel rods this will just go until it's full and we're hopefully have enough iron anyway and um, we're always going to want this to be full with the fuel rods as it's not really a limiting factor and it's not the thing that's going to slow us down but it just makes it easier than constantly having to you know manually click on it all the time so now hopefully if we click craft on the fuel rod is let's take that as well we're going to have to craft up our uranium nuclear fuel place it into the cannon machine it will go in with a rod to craft the fuel rod and then come back into our system. So let's just make sure that's working okay. Yep, you can see that it's just gone and worked. There you go. 
and back into the system brilliant so now we have automated crafting we have the automated fuel ingot or production facility bit and we also have the fuel and manufacturing process done brilliant so the only last bit now to do is to get it all put into our reactor quick little warning here um, if you're going to be automating your own reactor I don't want to be taking responsibility in case it blows up the design I've chosen I've had this running now for a few hours it's quite a simplistic design it hasn't really as you can see I've already got some fuel rods in it making sure these are mox ones as well and they've been running you can see that it's not outputting a great amount of energy the core temperature is zero I'm not an expert when it comes to setting up safe and powerful reactors if you want to copy this simple design it, it does seem to be stable enough you can see the heat vents that are all one there's not really much overheating or anything like that no real stats so yeah there's your warning in case you automate your own and it does blow up and another side note you can use this fuse quartz from Ender IO make sure it's completely blocked so don't like say you have bits like this because the blast will go through this gap and it will just destroy half your base so make sure you've fully enclosed it and it's all safe and you see at the bottom here I've got a piece of some flux cable coming out and what I've done is I've pulled it out and I've ran it along first so I've gone around corners so if the blast does come it will stop here and won't destroy any more of the base and it, won't, it doesn't follow out and I have checked this but like I said I just want you guys to be safe so only do this if you are confident with your knowledge of your reactor so now that's over with let's just have a look at what I've got set up in here so on one side I've got a export bus and on the other side I've got an input bus so you can probably guess where we're going with this so on one side we're going to want our depleted fuel rods to be exported now I, I have got mocks in there at the moment like I said I was just making sure this is this is a nice safe design everything like that so depending on what fuel rod you want going in and out is what you put on your export bus so it's going to export when it's depleted and put back into our system and on our other side we're going to eventually put our undepleted fuel rod and what we're going to say is if there is space because this is why you need a nice safe reactor that won't have any gaps in it for, the, for this sort of design anyway is if there's space we would want to craft this up and place it into the reactor and then once they're spent and used up we're going to export it and put it back into our system right that's that bit done so now let me just get this all wired up and everything and we'll have a look at that right so I've just gone hooked up that reactor under the bottom there and as you saw I put those crafting cars and whatnot in so at the moment you can see we have no excess of the fuel rods or any of the fuel in there at the moment and none of our uranium has been used up at the second okay so let's go and fix this so I'm just going to remove a piece of this MOX fuel and hopefully what we'll see is the system will realize there's a blank space the export bus will then tell the system to craft up a uranium fuel cell and put it in right on cue <laughs> could not have worked better <laughs> so soon what we're going to see which I'm going to cut the video and hopefully show us actually I'll, I'll probably cheat the way in anyway is once that fuel rod is going to be depleted it's going to pull out and put back into our system so let's get a depleted uranium fuel rod and let's say oh you can see it's already gone out of our system yeah so pretend that was an actual fuel rod our systems are going to realize it's a blank space once again it's going to start crafting up the rods and the fuel and place it in there like so right let's just get rid of these so don't want any confusion and hopefully we should see one depleted mox fuel cell in our system we have and you can also see there's no excess of our fuel rods and our fuel's gone down a little bit more so like i said with a thermal centrifuge let's just put these in when you place in your depleted fuel rods you can actually get out some of the fuel back which is good and you can do it for both the uranium and the mox so what we'll do is just cut back in a second once this is heated up and starting to break them down to show you the products okay so we're back up to heat and we'll slowly separate 
this fuel rod down and we'll see what we get. So we're probably going to see some mocks from it. Uh, three piles of plutonium. Iron dust, because that's from your fuel rod, so you can smell that back down, I think, and use it again. And tiny pile of plutonium. Now, with the depleted uranium, let's see what we get. We should probably get some, I think we get a tiny pile of plutonium back, and you get some uranium back, and you also get some iron dust back again. Yep, some more iron dust, uranium 23A, and tiny power of plutonium. So you can see that with the mocks, you're almost getting back all your same fuel. You can put the plutonium back in, such as, like this. And if you use the uranium, like that, you get your mocks fuel. To get your enriched uranium, obviously you've got to have your tiny powers in there that you have to get from the uranium ore. So if you get the b both, you can do a mixture of both and you get quite a good way. So the final step of, of our automation is going to be using our depleted fuel rods. Let's grab that one and add it into the process. So export bus, depleted there. I'm just going to hook it up around the back. Right. So we've just got that hooked up. So let's go and put this fuel rod back in here. And we should see that it's going to get extracted from our system and put into our thermal centrifuge yet. And it's starting to heat back up again. And then when this is broken back down, it's going to give us our fuel back. It's going to put it back into our system. Eventually when it's done, you see things like we've already got some of the tiny piles, the plutonium and whatnot. And then when the reactor asks for it, it's going to send a message to the AE system then it's going to create up the fuel it's going to put the fuel back into our interface in here to mix with our fuel rods put it back into our system and export it into our reactor and then when that's used up the fuel the empty fuel rods are going to come the depleted fuel rods are going to come out back into the system get sent to our thermal centrifuge to be broken back down that can be reused and when we get fuel coming in it's going to be breaking that down in the macerators and all washing plant and the thermal centrifuge again so we should have a nice supply of fuel so that's it for this tutorial. I hope I've given you guys some insight into how to use Applied Energistic 2 to automate Industrial Craft 2 and giving some ideas for the future as well. I hope this video has been insightful and thanks for watching.